You've got a giant text document from your client and now you need to create layout and design to get someone to actually want to read this document. But how does that work? Today I'm sharing with you my entire creative process for creating a brochure that is either intended for print or for digital use so that you can design with confidence and create more interesting documents. I'm going to talk about layouts, illustrations, finding photography, even some Canva and InDesign pro tips. So let's get started. Whenever I get a brochure project or any print project, I like to set up a joint Trello board with my client because even if it seems quite straightforward, there's usually a lot of files you need to share, like maybe they have images they want included, you've got the text document, maybe there's a brand guide, and you also want to make sure you're keeping all discussions and questions in one place so they're easy to find. The worst case scenario is starting to get tons of different questions and feedback as separate emails in your inbox because that's just going to get super cluttered. So take a little bit of time to invite them to a board. Next up, we have to pick a program to work in. And I think it's really important for my client to be able to make changes to the documents if that's something that we can offer. That's why I really like to work in Canva for this. So if the brochure is going to be purely digital, I think Canva is straightforward, the best option. If it's going to be for print, I usually go to InDesign and I'm going to share a little bit of why I like both of these different programs. One of the biggest benefits of InDesign is being able to create master pages. Master pages are basically like a template that you can apply to any of your different pages and you can create more than one master page as well if you have different layouts that come back. And that means that if you're updating that template, every page using that template will get that update. So if you're using things like a little bit of a header, for example, little details, having that one structure that gets updated universally is super helpful. I haven't found a way to do this in Canva, except you can, of course, just copy the page to make sure you're getting the same layout every time. But if you update one page, the other ones will not follow. I do want to encourage you to check out Canva though, because it is really easy to use and so many elements like arrows, lots of photos and icons are already available in their library. They also have a mock-up, so let's say your client has an app they want to showcase, you can just use their mock-up features to show it off. A really key aspect I like about Canva is also their frames. You can use shapes as holders for photos so that if you need to switch out an image or your client wants to do it, you can just drag another image into it and it will be replaced. A way to really step up your Canva use and offer something more valuable to clients is to also create custom frames using Illustrator and PowerPoint. This has been such a key way for me to make sure any documents I design are really on brand. So I'll share my process for this right now. First, you need to go to Adobe Illustrator and create a shape that you want your frame to be. Then save it as an SVG file. Open PowerPoint and add in your SVG file and then choose convert to shape and remove any background that may be left. Then choose fill and pick an image here. You could just use any photo from your computer. We were going to remove this anyway. Then we're going to save the PowerPoint slide as a PDF and we're going to add it into Canva. All this work we did shows Canva that this is a frame. So now that we click to remove the image, you'll see that the shape is still a frame and we can drag our own images into it. Now that we know a little bit more about the different programs, we can start setting up the documents. The first thing I like to do is to create those masters either by setting the master pages up in InDesign or by creating a template that I'm then going to copy in Canva. This is information that every page should contain. So that could be the name of the document, maybe the client logo and sometimes page numbers. I don't know if you agree, but to me, having these little details just always makes the document feel a bit more put together. So I always like to start there just to make sure I have space for them later on. And now it's time to start diving into the text. The most important thing when we add in text is to think about hierarchy. This means reading all the text and picking out which parts are most important and which might need imagery and graphics to maybe be a bit more clear. I like to create a copy of the shared document and then start by making little comments for myself or highlight text that I think could be pull out quotes, for example. A great way to get more hierarchy is to use a grid layout. There are tons of different kinds of grids and they can help you play around with the layout and still get a nice clean result. I really encourage you to use different columns and make the most of white space, like leaving sections of the page empty or using a large image to create more breathing space. To save yourself time later, make sure you're also using the right fonts and sizes right from the beginning. If the brand guide already has fonts picked out, use those. And if not, I would ask the client to approve the ones that you suggest before you get started. You also want to pay attention to the font sizes. Make sure your document is accessible by using good color contrast and not using tiny font sizes. I never go below 9 or 10, but I find that 11 or 12 is usually a good size to get people to keep reading. 
You also want to have a nice contrast in font size between titles and body copy. So for example, if you squint at the document, can you clearly see the titles and which is body copy? With everything set up, lay out all your text and I also suggest using placeholders for all the images for now. Once you have a layout that makes a lot of sense, we can start looking for photography. If your client has provided you with some, that's great, go ahead and drop them in. If not, you can use free sites like Pexels or Unsplash to source your own. You can also ask your client if they have a budget for photos. Stock sites like Stocksy usually have a lot more options and especially more diverse options to look into. Try to represent people who look different and always refer back to the brand guide if they have one. Sometimes it's really hard to find an image that perfectly represents something in the text and this is where illustrations and graphics like infographics can be a really good fit. One option is to source these just like you did with photos. Sites like StorySet and Humans let you customize and download illustrations with people so that they fit your projects. If you have Unsplash Plus, they also recently launched a ton of illustrations that you can download and use as they are or you can edit them yourself. There are also great stock sites like Envato Elements and Creative Market where you can find lots of options. My favorite one though is Create Your Own. Make sure though that this is part of your original proposal so that you're not working for free. But it can be a really valuable asset for your client to have these custom graphics created. Especially when it's data or something that is a little bit harder to find something that could be a perfect fit for. Little details like icons, a really nice quote mark, or a background graphic can go a long way to create more depth and personality, so have a play around and see what works best for your project. It might seem a little bit strange, but one of the last things I do is to design the cover. This is such an important page because it's what's going to encourage someone to actually move forward and read this document, and I want to understand what the document is about before I actually design the cover. Start by checking what key information you need to include. So that might be a title of the document itself, might be a logo, might be a subtitle, a year, anything like that so that you can lay that out first. Then play to your strengths. If you're an illustrator, you can create a cover that is either thought-provoking or beautiful. If you're a graphic designer, you can work with type or with photography of the target audience, for example, to really compel someone to keep reading. Since this page is so important, I like to give my clients two or three options here. And that also helps me explore some different directions. If we're creating a purely digital document that will maybe be downloaded from their website, for example, you can actually start linking things, like for example, the logo could be linked to their website. You can also interlink the index, for example, to jump to different pages. And you can link, of course, to external sources that they might want to include. If you're designing for print, make sure that you have the right print settings. You can always ask the printer that they're going to be using, but overall, you want to include the bleed. You want to make sure all the images are linked or embedded. And you also want to make sure that all the fonts are embedded. If you're working in InDesign, you can go to this little box here and put a value of zero and that will embed the different fonts. Lastly, we want to get helpful feedback from our clients. If you've designed in Canva, you can just head over here to the Share tab and choose to copy the link. We can then add this link into Trello or whatever program you're using and that way your client can add comments right to the relevant page. If you're using InDesign, it works in a really similar way. You just click share and follow these steps here. The exact same tips we've used here can be used for any document like annual reviews, white papers, impact reports. So there's tons of ways that you can put your layout skills to good use. I hope you found this helpful. If you want to learn more about creating a good creative process, you can watch this video next. Thank you so much for watching. Good luck with your projects and see you next time.